Salam bahagia dan selamat pagi. Your Excellency, Governor Muhammad bin Ibrahim. Distinguished guests of honours and ladies and gentlemen, what a great honour for me to be back in the Bank Negara Malaysia once more. Now, two weeks ago, my team and I, we were invited to deliver a keynote speech at the IMF Statistical Forum in Washington, D.C., where extensive discussions were being held around one single very crucial topic. The world was concerned. The world wanted to know how do we measure the digital economy. The topics of digitalization is not something new, but why has it become such a huge topic and such a huge phenomenon globally over just under very, very short periods of time? And in my opinion, I think it has largely to do with this thing called China's development within the space of digital economy. Digital has contributed to more than 30% of the total China's GDP and this single, single indicator alone has become the largest, the highest growth rate in the world. And in the meantime, China today is already a leading country in e-commerce, mobile payment, and is home to one-third of the world's unicorns. Ladies and gentlemen, central stage to all this economic progress is what we call digital payment a product of the integrations of information technology and a tradition finance. It certainly, definitely plays a very, very key leading role as a dynamic force that penetrates and then transforms the entire economic ecosystem of China as we know today. Now, this chart that we are seeing right now is not just a, re a record of a proud recollections of a historical legacy comprises of brilliant entrepreneurships, liberations of public policies at work, but more importantly, a best-in-class case study of digital economy from the world. This shall be the theme of my speech today. The key takeaway beyond payment, a new digital horizon. Now, let us begin by taking a quick overview on the China payment landscape. We shall see how the digital payment infrastructure evolved over the years into a complementary to a financial traditional finance system. Not too long ago, China was still a cash-dominated society, and it is only in the mobile era that digital payment has experienced an explosive growth. Within just the last few years, have we witnessed the declines of cash usage and the rise of digital payment? How far has China actually has gone cashless in a society? Now, today, only one third of the payments were cash-based in year 2016. This is helped largely by the post-90s generation that becomes the mainstream consumers. And of course, the entrepreneurships of the third-party payment enterprises, excluding the bank cards, has grown at a high rate of 52% CARGE 2012 to the year 2016 to a humongous amount of 48 trillion renminbi versus a moderate 25% CARGE in bank card payments. The third-party payment is now accounted for more than 40% of total and 63% of non-cash payment in China. Now, many know that China is a highly competitive and to some might be a complex marketplace. And for a new business model to obtain such a high adoption rate under such a short periods of time, they must have done something more than correct. To begin with, the third-party payments enterprises with Alibaba taking a leadership position along with Tencent, Union Pay, and many others have focused on building a third-party network on handlings of the C2B or small enterprises B2B payment flows. Today, China is 11 times larger than the United States in terms of mobile payment. 77%, that is two out of three China 
mobile users, uh, mobile payment users. Today, third-party payment has made Alibaba and Tencent the leaders in this rapidly growing segment. Tencent's payment and Alipay recorded a combined payments of 2.9 trillion US dollars in the year 2016, 33 times larger than the year before, and equal to 80%, over 80% of China's third-party payment market. In the last four years, Alipay has grown 23 times and Tencent Payment Services is 85 times, almost tripling the entire market share. In China today, a cashless society is gradually being formed and various types of digital payment-based services in areas such as insurance, municipal services, education and transportation have contributed to an ever more convenient online lifestyles of the people. Ladies and gentlemen, this is just not a day-to-day -day reality. It is far more than a myth. I remember even the Prime Minister of Singapore was making a comment when he was delivering one of the parliamentary speech in the recent days. As I say at the beginning, China did not just emerge into a cashless society overnight. The country has gone through three different stages in their evolutions towards embracing a cashless society practice. In order to create the first tipping point for consumers' adoption, three fundamental drivers must be in place. The digital infrastructure, the digital pioneers, and the digital users. The Chinese government over the years has played an instrumental role in building an increasingly sophisticated digital infrastructure. It has advanced a number of policies and programs designed to strengthen the digital economy making it a powerful engine to further economic growth into the future. While at the same time, the rapid emergence and growth of Chinese tech sectors, the startups that have made China a more internet-friendly environment, and some of these leading tech companies are creating a multifaceted and multi-industry digital ecosystem. A ubiquitous network connection has enabled the very first tipping point to take place. Now, as the industry continues to evolve against a market backdrop whereby the credit card payment infrastructure was not well developed, these entrepreneurs realized that digital payment, if made available purely as an alternative to payment, made payment readily available, would not be good enough to create a larger tipping point for a ground shifting consumer adoption. Thus, the focus in perfecting a seamless digital payment experience would have to be heavily rely upon the commitments of all players to firstly ensure a world-class e-commerce ecosystem delivery. Room certainly wasn't built in a day. Alibaba, Tencent, and other digital pioneers have endeavored to building a digital payment system for more than 13 years. In those early days, Alibaba, a truly respectable, innovative e-commerce leader, has proven its commitment in pushing the digital payment from zero to a reality along the evolutionary process of the entire payment history. Another key driver one should never neglect is the fact that China has the world's largest digital users as well as mobile users. Over 50% of China's population utilizes mobile access. The huge network effect has led to a wide variety of innovations, thereby pushing China's transformation from a trend follower to a global trend setter. Digital, infra digital infrastructure, digital pioneers, and digital users have worked together to co-create an ecosystem from zero to one laying a solid foundation for mobile payment, which marks the beginning of the second phase in digital payment. Ladies and gentlemen, history would record the phase twos of the China cashless society journey as the era of a flying wheel effect powered by mobile internet. During this period of transition, 
the industry faced yet another major challenge of converting users from a PC habit to a mobile-based payment. With major drivers such as the dawning age of mobile internet, the proliferations of innovations in open platforms, and the liberations of social connectivity. And I'm pleased to note that this is an era where WeChat payment has contributed largely in escalating the digital payment industry into a brand new horizon. During these eras of mobile payment, Tencent WeChat payment services has achieved almost 40% of market share in just under four years. Against the backdrops of a clear market leader and a tectonic shift of internet mobility, one would naturally ask the question, how could this has happened? Now let us take a look at this video for inspiration. There are many ancient symbols that can represent China, such as the Great Wall, dragons, and even chopsticks. But you might not know of another ancient Chinese symbol, the Hongbao, the Great Red Envelope, the most traditional gift in China. Given by elders and parents to younger generations, Chinese people have been sharing the Hongbao tradition for thousands of years. During Chinese New Year, weddings, birthdays, and other special occasions. Despite containing money, its true value comes from its symbolic gesture of wishing happiness and good luck. Tencent has revolutionized this millinery tradition by bringing the paper envelope to the red envelope function on WeChat. The Hongbao just became greater. By linking your bank account, it allows users to send individual or group Hongbaos. If it is your choice, the app will distribute randomly the amount, adding suspense to the experience and encouraging more spending. A new way of sharing tradition and exchanging money, breaking traditional Hongbao limitations, gathering friends and families, linking colleagues in real time no matter the distance, anytime, anywhere. During the most watched television program in the world, the 2015 Chinese New Year Gala on CCTV, viewers were invited to use the Shake feature on WeChat to get cash and Hongbao coupons, getting over 11 billion shakes from 185 countries around the world, reaching 810 million shakes per minute. At 2234, more than 500 million renminbi was shared. 120 million sent and received Hongbaos within China from 2232 to 2242. 1.01 billion transactions on Chinese New Year's Eve. WeChat Hongbao, a tradition brought to a digital era. The Hongbao, the Great Red Envelope, by Tencent. WeChat Hongbao, or Angbao that we call it in Malaysia, became the first tipping point, you will never believe that, to unleash another round of exponential growth in what we now call a social payment by uncovering an innovative way to combine payment with a traditional culture. Social payment today is a newly acknowledged payment method where people could use WeChat payment for birthdays, for celebrating a little success in business, and even for happy reasons, such as imposing a penalty for staff members that are coming late to a meeting. In Tencent, if I'm late for a meeting, I've got to give WeChat Hongbao to all my people that are in the meeting rooms. This is a real, real story. Yeah. Now, more new usage behaviors have been created voluntarily by our billions of users. Now, another major event that has taken place during this flying wheel effect era was when a warfare on market share that has erupted in the online taxi hailing sector and we believe this became the second tipping point that further accelerated the adoption rate of mobile payment. This was a painful, a great warfare sponsored by Alibaba and Tencent with the intention to capture market share of the taxi riders. Both companies were providing attractive subsidies for users to register their payment wallet with either of the online taxi company. Billions of cash rebates, billions of cash rebates were given out to the users who were willing to register their debit cards with either Alipay or WeChat wallet. And the users did respond very well to such incentives. Within 24 months during when the warfare lasted, 232 million users have registered with either WeChat or Alipay wallet. 
Well, as I say, it was really a painful experience for both companies, but it ended well with good outcome as most eventful results were simply this. Previously, people who had always wanted to pay with cash when riding for taxi, today they began to completely accept a cashless payment option in China. Finally, Tencent has been known as a company that put user experience as a very core value. And I'm glad the government has mentioned it just now. The use of so-called QR code. Actually, Tencent was one of the companies in China that's incorporated QR code into our WeChat product. And this became another tipping point as a behavior of scanning everything under the roof was soon becoming a day-to-day -day habit. A few days ago, we were with the Minister of Agriculture in Malaysia, and I'm very glad to hear that even Malaysia is taking steps to ensure that the, the Musang King that we are exporting to China is incorporated with a QR code so that people can enjoy, they know where the, the roots of that Musang King, from which tree and from which kampong. It's a true story, by the way. <laughs> so, people connected the QR code with the ability to instantaneously connect with virtually everything, as you can see in this next video. Ni hao, Igor Jen Bing. I've just ordered Jen Bing, Beijing's favorite breakfast food. People queue up here every morning to get their hands on this. But right now, I don't have my wallet. Luckily, here in China, with my smartphone, I don't need it. Paying for my breakfast takes just a few seconds. So I scan the QR code, and it's processing the payment. All set. From tiny street vendors to large chains, a huge amount of businesses in Beijing are accepting mobile payments. The most popular? Alipay from Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba and messaging app WeChat. So you just pay your water bill with your phone? Yes. I'm going to pay now. That easy? Yeah. CNN producer Shen Lu uses WeChat to pay utilities, even rent. I use it to hail a taxi. Ni hao. I'm on my way to meet Gu Yu co-founder of a new payment app, Miles Life. Hi. Hey, I'm Will. Uh, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. He says many urban Chinese just don't bother with credit cards. They prefer to pay by phone, putting China's mobile commerce way ahead of other major economies like the U.S. and Japan. China doesn't really have a like, really lucrative credit card system, so Chinese just skip credit card and go to mobile payment. Something he calls a late development right. advantage. For me, totally it means no that. wallet, no problem. You can totally survive without cash. So we can split the taxi fare using our phone? Yeah, yeah definitely. It's called shun feng che in Chinese. Right, Sharon. Yeah. Convenience comes with a catch. The Chinese government monitors and censors social media apps, including mobile commerce. Is there concern about the government monitoring your economic activity? I think normal citizens they don't. I think a human rights activists, they have huge concern on this. Chinese citizens are used to the government knowing where they travel, who they call, and now what they spend. It doesn't stop hundreds of millions of Chinese from making mobile payments, totaling hundreds of billions of dollars. And the service is expanding beyond big cities, a growing market even in China's slowing economy. So saying I forgot my wallet isn't an excuse anymore? No, no, no. But what if your phone battery dies? Like, that's real excuse. No, that's not an excuse. You know, that's a real problem now, actually. Right. Everybody can pay. Yeah. Mobile payment apps even allow us to split the check. A day without my wallet has never been easier. Will Ripley, CNN, Beijing. Well, as you can see from those stories that I've shared, the digital payment journey was not an isolated financial industry matter. The challenge has always been about creating an ecosystem that is user-friendly so that consumer adoption would take place. This was how we have grown from one to n and creating the flying wheel effect with many other players in China. Be it the WeChat Hongbao story or the taxi mobile wallet warfare, even the stories of a QR code, all these are results from entrepreneurship taking advantage of the mobile internet open platform innovation and social connectivity that has been taking place in China. Ladies and gentlemen, the story of China cashless society is an ongoing journey. As technology evolves, social connectivity deepens and digital payment becoming a common practice, 
this inevitably would leapfrog the society into a digital civilization. Today, we are entering into the phase whereby digital civilization could potentially be the backbone of the next phase of our digital economy. Within this new phase of payment, you would see that the role of payment is now beyond just a financial transaction, but carries a stronger social connotation. This is an era of social economy development from end to the possibility of infinity. It will be an era where the values of individual will be empowered further by the power of connectivity. In the year 2015, the Chinese government unveiled the concepts of Internet Plus, which was followed up by a detailed action plans to integrate internet, cloud computing, big data, and the internet of things with various traditional sectors and industry players. In today's China, Tencent's smart life solution with WeChat Pay at its heart and with a WeChat account as the individual universal ID provides online access to municipal services, social security, medical services, public transportation, just to name a few. What has been created is a WeChat smart galaxy under its open platform concept. And in this respect, we are working with the China latest state-level special zone and development hub, Xiong'an, to customize another advanced plan of smart city solution, spanning from cloud computing to fintech and from big data-driven risk control to Tencent cloud-based blockchain as a service. We will build the next generations of a smart city, covering daily lives, business management, as well as government administration. Ladies and gentlemen, this brings me to the last part of my speech today. What can Malaysia learn from the China digital payment story? To begin, let us remember that digital payment is not simply a payment made digitally. Digital payment is a catalyst for the entire digital economy and may well be the last mile to travel before reaching the ultimate destination of what we call digital civilization, ushering in more inclusive, balanced, and intelligent era for all of us. What can be done collectively to capitalize on such opportunities? First of all, do not jump into the bandwagon without a best expertise. The temptation is to jump onto the digital payment bandwagon without giving any appropriate considerations and due diligence to investing in building the best talents, the real commitment for user experience, and building up the foundation of this new ecosystem. I would strongly urge every one of us to consider investing into this area for a long-term return. Secondly, technology must be used as both a driver as well as a guardian. The golden rule for any credible payment system is trust. Digital or conventional, this would not change. As Malaysians become more digital savvy, data and security are vital to the integrity of the financial industry, and safeguarding security must be your first priority at any given time. In our 19 years of history, Tencent has managed to secure a sure, a stable data operations while accumulated valuable frontline experiences. And this must be your most important vision as well. Thirdly, believe in the values of a joint, of a joint effort ecosystem. As our founder, Pony Ma, has said, humans are connected by the internet, forming a communities of common destiny in cyberspace. No single company or organization is able to take this challenge on by itself. In fact, it requires an open mindset and the joint efforts of governments, industry partners, and various social groups to build and govern together. Therefore, policymakers, financial institutions, technocrats, companies, startups, and various other types of businesses 
everyone is a stakeholder in making Malaysia the mobile digital payments leader in Southeast Asia. And finally, do find the Malaysian way of a digital journey. We must always keep in mind that every market is unique. Every culture has its distinctive accents and every nation has its very own spirit. Each nation must blaze its own trail. Simply duplicating technology or implementing the learning experience of others may not lead to a duplication of their success. You, we, should discover a uniquely Malaysian journey to digital development because Malaysians know better than anyone else on how to work within the local culture to establish a path to greater prosperity for the Malaysian people. In closing, for Malaysia, all of the building blocks needed to construct a cashless society are in place. Mobile penetrations, banking infrastructures, advanced regulatory systems, and a desire to innovate. Bank Negara Malaysia has already done a considerable work in preparing and nurturing the playing field, consistently inspiring innovations and building payment ecosystem since the year prior to 2011. I couldn't agree more when the governor has said, and I quote, for many years, Bank Negara Malaysia has taken the leadership role in shaping the developments of this country's payment systems in line with its statutory mandate to promote safer, efficient and reliable payment system. Now it is time to plant the crops and bring on the harvest. And Tencent will stand by you, will stand firm in this role as a connector and as an able to in joining hands with you and working together with all of you into this bright future. With that, terima kasih.